Okay. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. If this is your first time logging on to Travel Hackers Academy, which happens every Thursday at 7 p.m. Arizona time, I would love to hear from you. Go ahead and put a comment saying first timer. And if you're watching this on the replay a week later, go ahead and put hashtag replay for me just so I can kind of see if this time's still working for people or if people are having to get on a week later. So I'm going to go on to the comments here so I can try to keep up with you guys. It might take a second for it to come up in my group on my phone. So let's just see. All right, awesome, and I'm gonna turn that volume down. Okay, cool. So it looks like I already have a couple of people watching, so thank you so much. It looks like Deanna's on, it looks like Natalie is on, and it looks like Jessica did a um, comment before that. So thanks, guys. If you haven't already, please consider giving StreamYard permission to view your comments. If not, that's totally fine. I can try to follow along with them in the group on my phone. And I just want to go over a couple that we already have. So it looks like Jessica, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Makowicz was saying, PD for teachers during summer is normally not a positive, in my opinion, uh, but yours is an exception. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm going to adjust my camera ever so slightly just so you guys can actually see my face. It's not just looking down on me there. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, thank you. I, I really appreciate that. I try that when I'm putting these trips together, and you'll see a whole list of them if you're new, um, I really want to put, put them together with teachers' needs in mind, right? So I know that everybody needs PD. I know it's not always the most fun thing, but tonight we're actually going to be talking about five ways you can make the most of your PD, especially if they happen during summer or school breaks, because they can be fun, and there are a few ways to make it fun. Oh, Alyssa knows the drill. Alyssa, hi, Alyssa. So if you're also coming on right now, I'd love for you just to say hi, drop your favorite travel emoji, let me know that you're watching and tuning in live, that'd be great. And of course, if you're on the replay, you can go ahead and give me hashtag replay to let me know you're watching it. Um, yeah, so that's what we're all we're going to talk about tonight. It looks like Alicia's watching, Karen Thomas is watching, Alyssa's here, Nicole's here. Hi, guys. Welcome. Feel free to engage, comment, let me know if you're watching live, drop your favorite travel emoji, or hashtag replay if you're coming on. Okay, so like I said, tonight we're going to be talking about the leisure. And if you haven't heard that term before, that's okay. It's a relatively new term in the travel industry, a few years old now. And basically it just means a combination of business and leisure travel. And that's getting a lot more popular as people are realizing they don't always have the time off they want to go back and take the trips when they're assigned to. So it just makes sense. If you're already going to a certain state or country or city for professional development or for a conference, why not just make the most of it and enjoy your time there, right? And that's what this is all about. So we're going to be talking about a few different ways to do that and to make the most of your time tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you and we will get started. Oh, there we go. And awesome. Okay. So I'm going to present from the beginning here. Oh, Janelle is watching. Anne's watching. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, Becky. Oh, I'm so excited, too, because so many people who are logging on are actually going to be coming to the yacht trip to Croatia with us next summer. I'm just so excited. I legitimately cannot wait to hang out with all of you guys, seriously and truly. Okay, so let me hide this here. So again, if you're new, welcome. Every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Arizona time, I come on and we do something called Travel Hackers Academy. Now, the theme is slightly different each week. The, top, the specific topic varies a bit, but basically I'm showing teachers how they can travel better on a budget for free and paid. And I know that a lot of teachers are naturally skeptical. And so when they hear something like that, they're, you know, it can be a red flag for people. And I totally get that. And so when I used to say that, people were like, oh, I don't know. So the last two months, I've really dedicated these nights for showing you how to do that. We have a slightly different series coming up starting next month or this month, I guess. It's already July, which is crazy. Um, but I wanted to end this with showing you how you can make the most of your PD because I know it's something we all have to deal with as teachers, at least if you're in the United States. Yes, Vanessa, so excited for Croatia. She's actually bringing her daughter who's also into history and going to be a teacher. I just think that's the coolest thing. So feel free to connect with each other. If you're coming on that yacht trip to Croatia, let me know in the comments and you guys can feel free to reach out to each other. Okay, 
So like I said, Travel Hackers Academy is all about learning to travel better on a budget, paid and for free. Um, but you know, not everybody wants to get paid to travel or work in the travel industry. I totally get that. And so that's why I have this so that it just free and clear. It's my offer to you. Um, just take it as a gift so that you can learn more ways to do it. So that even if you never go on a group trip with me, that's okay. I just want to help people travel more, especially teachers. You know, I know that you all need it. You need to get out there. You need to have those transformative travel experiences, not only for your own benefit and for your kids and families, but for your students, right? because you can bring so much back into the classroom. So a little bit about me, if you're new to me, um, I have all kinds of hats that I wear. I am a full-time teacher. I live and work on a reservation in Northeastern Arizona. I also am a tour operator. Traveling Teachers is my company. I am a trip leader. So not only do trips, actually take people out on them. And I'm looking to do more in the state of Arizona too, because so many teachers come out here and ask me about that. I'm also a travel blogger and a travel agent. And I also coach teachers and anyone really who wants to learn on how to make their own travel business. So if that's something you are interested in, of course, feel free to reach out to me. Hey, Kathy, Vanessa says we're going the 10th and 17th. Yeah. So if you're going the 10th to 17th, let Vanessa know you guys can connect. It'd be great. Okay. Oh, Deanna's on. Hi, Deanna. So again, tonight is all about five ways you can make the most of your PD that takes place during the summer or school breaks and AKA leisure travel. When I put that up, I probably could have given it a more clear name because if you haven't heard that, you're like, what is that? But basically leisure is just when you combine business and leisure. And for educators, that could be conferences, PD, seminars. It can be a travel program for teachers. I mean, there's just about a million opportunities. And if that's something you're interested in, you're in the right place because we cover that stuff all the time here. Okay. So this is me, a little more about me, just some trips I've done. I'm going to go through that pretty quickly. I should probably change out some pictures to give you guys a little bit of variance, but uh, it's just to show that, you know, travel doesn't always have to be super grandiose and expensive. You know, like in this slide right here, I have a picture of me in the hills near San Francisco because I got to live and work at an outdoor school for a year. And I got, so not only did I live in the Bay Area rent free, but I got paid over $300 a week to take kids out and have transformative travel experiences, right? It's what I'm all about. I love that. And being able to actually teach with experiential education using my environment, so powerful. And so if that's something you're looking into, I'd love to show you about that. Uh, upper right-hand corner, I'm in Zion, very affordable. We camped the whole time under that yellow um, Yellowstone, Tetons, oh, it's a beautiful park. Um, and then pictures in the airport. Hi, Jeff. Haven't seen you in a while. Hey, Michelle. Hey, good to see you guys. I'm glad you're here. So it's a show that travel does not have to be expensive. Um, and if you love luxury travel, that's great. And, you know, I know some awesome vendors and partners you might want to look into. But usually most teachers don't really go into luxury travel, right? They want to travel on a budget. They want to make their money go further. And there's so many ways you can do that. So that's what we're talking about tonight. Um, hi, Jessica. Okay, so live norms. So just for anyone who's new, especially, just know that this meeting will be recorded. It's not really a meeting, I guess. It's more of a presentation. But this goes into the Travel Hackers Academy course I'm building. It should actually be ready in a week and a half. I'm super excited about that. And this is just one component, right? The videos are in there. There's also some live workshops. And basically, the whole point is to help teachers go on their next trip for free right? That's what I'm putting together. That's what I'm trying to help teachers with to show them it's possible. So it's going to be $37. Um, you're getting already some of the components from being here, but all the videos will be taken down pretty shortly and put into the course, but there'll also be some other components. So look out for that. For this live, make sure you're giving StreamYard permission to view your comments. Not required, but it helps because then I can kind of track the video. Um, I'll drop any relevant links after the live. So if you want to learn anything more about what I talk about, let me know in the comments. Oh, Cindy's watching too. Hey, Cindy. And please engage. You know, if you're coming on now, say hi. Drop your favorite travel emoji feel free to reply to other people's comments. I was just saying a minute ago that we have a lot of people watching right now who are going to Croatia with us next summer. Drop the week that you're going and maybe you guys can connect, that'd be awesome. Okay, and of course, as always, keep all dialogue respectful and helpful. That's not usually a problem. I have had to delete a couple of members here and there, and I hate doing that, I really don't want to. So just make sure you're keeping it respectful and helpful. Um, 
you know, don't bring any negativity in here, right? It's, we know, we know things are so hard right now. Um, and, and I know that we travel, it could be really hard right now, but I want this to be a place of hope and encouragement and excitement. And, you know, we can talk about real change and ways to change that. I'm totally open to that. But as far as just saying this can't be done, not possible, I'm, I'll just unfortunately have to remove you. Okay, so please don't do that. Keep it positive and encouraging. And if, if it's if you don't think something is possible, be open and receptive to learning and dis disagree respectfully. Okay, so the number one tip, we're talking about five ways you can really make the most of your PD travel this tonight. And the number one thing is to choose the right program, right? Um, it can be kind of overwhelming when you're first getting into this world of teacher, tra teacher travel, summer programs, fellowships, all of that, and you're kind of inundated. It's like once you find one, all of a sudden you're finding them all and you're just kind of like, ah, and you almost feel pressured sometimes. Oh, I have to do them all of them. I have to do top next summer and then I'm going to go to Freedom Foundation and then I'm going to do Gilder Lehman and then I'm going to apply for Fun for Teachers. But I mean, if you think about it, that's like five or six years in advance already. And not to say there's anything wrong with that. It's great to plan ahead, but you really want to spend some time thinking about, are these programs going to be right for me? Because, you know, time is precious. It's that one non-renewable resource you can never get back. So make sure you choose a program that's right for you if you have to do PD, right? And so here are some things to think about when you're choosing, and we already have a list. If you actually go to the post, one of the announcements, it has the four titles, you'll actually see a link and it's constantly being added to of different teacher travel programs. So if you're new to that, definitely check that out as a resource to you. So when you're looking at a program or you're comparing them, you wanna think about what you need and what you want. Right. So, for example, I'm an elementary teacher and I teach generally all subjects, although we've departmentalized recently and I teach ELA. So for me, it wouldn't make as much sense to go to a high school economics program. Right. I might be interested in it, but that may not be something that really holds my attention because in the back of my mind, I might be thinking, I don't know if I'm really ever going to use this unless I know I'm going to be transitioning to that in the future. Now, I actually went to the Young Entrepreneurs League of Freedom Foundation, and I loved it. I got so much from that. And even though it was mostly geared toward middle and high school as an elementary teacher, I was able to take so much away. We started a Young Entrepreneurs Club this year. It was fantastic. So if that's something you're interested in, also feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to brainstorm that with you. But make sure that you're considering those needs, right? Don't just say, oh, this, this program's in Russia, I'm going, right? Because I always wanted to go to Russia. You might love the fact that you're going to Russia, but how sad would it be to go to this place you've always wanted to go to and then not be able to see or do anything you wanted to do because you were in the program the whole time and then if the program doesn't have information you need or um, practice you need, or experience, then you're gonna be really bummed. So make sure you're considering what you actually need and want when you're going to those programs. Also make sure you're going at the right time of the year. There might be a perfect program in Russia, maybe you've always wanted to go, but it's in the dead of winter, right? And you might think, oh, it's during winter break, I can go. But that might not make the most out of your experience because it's not the best time to go there, right? You wanna go during spring or summer. And then also, of course, that it's in the right place. So maybe, maybe Russia is a place you've always wanted to go and maybe the program is great, but if you're learning about German history, World War II, maybe you'd rather learn that in Germany or Italy or France, as opposed to if you're learning about the Cold War, learning in Russia or United States about that, right? So, you know, just make sure that when you're weighing those programs, PDs, seminars, that what it makes sense for the place, right? And because I think sometimes organizations, even businesses, we offer what we think the customers will want, but we're not always thinking about what's actually going to be the best experience for them. So make sure that you're you're weighing that through as you're going through all these programs, because over the next year, as things start to open back up, you're going to see a whole bunch of posts in this group about this travel program and this grant and this opportunity. And you have to constantly be weighing and filtering them about what's actually going to work for you. Um, and of course, offering the right PD for you, right? Like you might interested in the organization, the place, and the date might work for you, but the PD might not. So look out for that. And then make sure it has a schedule that allows you to explore the downtime. I'll talk about how to tweak that in a second, 
But wouldn't it just be a travesty if you went to, okay, World War II in France, you're going to go to the beach of Normandy. That's cool. and But then the schedule is packed from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. and you never have any chance to explore the town. Wouldn't that just be so sad? So make sure that you're looking at every component out of the program because you're going to spend time applying. You're going to spend time reaching out to other teachers. Make sure it's going to fit your wants and needs there. And make sure you're going to have some time to explore that area, right? Shameless plug for Finland. So if you didn't know already, this November, we're actually going to Finland. It's part PD, part play. So we're going to be going and observing schools in Helsinki for three and a half days. I can't wait because we're going to connect with other teachers in Finland. Like what a better way to learn from other educators, right? Not from principals or administrators who haven't been in the game for a while. We're learning from other teachers and learning from the students. And I'm just so excited to learn about their education system. I've wanted to do it for years. Um, and so it's going to be new to me too, not the trip planning, but the actual classroom observations. I'm super excited about that part. And then we're going to go north to Rovaniemi, the gateway to the Arctic Circle during, you know, Thanksgiving for us, Christmas time, basically for them. And we're going to go and mush with huskies. We're going to visit reindeer. We're going to chase the northern lights with a professional photographer. These are all things that we don't just get to do every day, right? So definitely check that out. Um, you know, I just don't want people to miss out on it. And I'm going to take as many or as few as scientists up so if it's four of us we're going if it's you know eight of us we're going 15 maybe we'll go um if, if 15 sign up that would be a big group so just however many people sign up it's going to be a good time and if that fits for you you might be like you know what i i teach college that won't really work for me you know that's something you have to think about as well and of course another thing you can do that makes sense is to arrive earlier and stay later so for example for finland there might be some people who can't come for that full week or maybe there are some people who are like, you know, I want to go to the, the classroom visits, but I don't really want to go up north. I would rather stay in Helsinki. That's fine. They can just pick out what they want to do and they can arrive earlier or stay later. Uh, I did this with Freedom Foundations when I went to Philadelphia. I stayed a few days earlier. I came a few days earlier so I could go to the museums I wanted and see all those historical United States sites, you know, that classic American history. It was so fun. It was so exciting to just walk around, explore the city on my own. There's like the street where all these apartments have been there since the 1700s and people are still living in them. In fact, if any of you have done Freedom Foundations, can you just let us know in the comments below? Let other teachers know what you thought of it because I think it's a great program and I can talk about it all day, but it doesn't matter what I say, right? It matters what uh, if you hear other teachers saying it. So if you've done that program, you should feel free to share. And they don't just do like the place the ones that are at Valley Forge. They actually take teachers on traveling trips um, around. It's pretty great. And I'm just seeing now, hold on, that it's just showing my slides. So I'm just going to fix that really quickly. One second. And so sorry, guys. Okay, not sure what's going on there. Okay, well, it's gonna, I guess it's showing the whole screen. There we go, okay, cool. I was like, what is happening? Tech stuff, it happens sometimes. Okay. Um, oh, awesome. Rachel's watching. Hey, Rachel's actually coming to Finland with us. Jessica Culver just said, I love Philly and I was set to do Freedom Foundations this summer and now online. That's such a bummer. I'm so sorry. It's definitely not the same experience as actually being there and being able to experience it. Um, so I really hope that you're able to go in the future and actually be there in person. And then Vanessa said she did Traveling Civil War Central Program with Freedoms Foundation and was fantastic. That's awesome. Okay, cool. I'm glad that you guys are getting able, able to chat, chat about this in the comments. So yeah, so I went a few days earlier and that was great. Um, that really just made the trip. I, I love Philadelphia. Um, and so of course, arriving earlier and staying later. And the reason I'm going to say, try to do both if you can in a minute, hang on tight for that. But if you can try to do both and I'll explain why in a second, when you're booking, make sure you book using a flexible flight window. If possible, if you have to fly, uh, that shows you, um, 
that gives you options to make sure you get the best flight deal, of course, but then also um, it maybe gives you some options to like save money with accommodations as well, because sometimes a flight can cost less if you actually come a few days earlier or later, right? Especially if you're not traveling on a weekend. So it might be worth it to extend your stay anyway. Um, and then Jessica said, I'm sure the online Freedom Foundation program this summer will be great. And I hope to attend in person in the future and apply again. Yes, definitely worth it, Jessica, for sure. So like I said, you want to try to come earlier and stay later. And this is the reason why. You want to leave those post program plans open and flexible. Um, I'm glad I did that for the for that particular trip because I ended up making some awesome friends in the program. And then we got to kind of travel together. I had my accommodations mapped out, but I left the rest of my plans open intentionally. And that's where I actually met a lot of you. And so I'm super thankful for that. So if this is something that you're new to, or even if you just haven't really been able to leave your schedule flexible, I highly recommend it because that's what really makes those trips memorable. Um, it's not just going and learning the content, right, and getting a practical experience. It's forging those connections um, and experiencing that teacher camaraderie and community. That's what really makes it. Jessica Culver said, we did 4th of July last Philly. Truly love that so much history. Ah, I'm so happy for you. I've always wanted to spend 4th of July in Boston or Philadelphia. It's one of my like, you know, future things. I was actually hoping to spend the 4th of July off um, this summer because it's on a Saturday. But unfortunately, um, we're still in lockdown here on the reservation. So hopefully you all have awesome 4th of July plans and that you're able to get out there and travel. Um, so as I said, make sure that you make your solo plans happen before the program. Any museums or sites you want to see, get that out of the way first and then leave after a uh, post program for new friends you make. And if you have any friends or family in the area, that's a great way to extend your trip and not pay as much, right? And that also gets you to be able to see friends and make just make the most of that time. Todd is watching. Hey, Todd, welcome. Feel free to drop your favorite travel emoji. If you're just tuning in, let me know you're here. So we already talked about how we can get the most out of our summer programs by choosing the right one. And I showed you some criteria on how to do that by extending our trip so we can make that into a personal recreational trip. But third, and this should have probably come first, because if we don't have this, it's going to be hard to do the others. And that is to have the right mindset going in, right? Because it's one thing just to say, like, you know, what, I'm excited or, you know, I get to go to Philadelphia for a week. Great. Um, but if I go in with the, the feeling of, oh, it's summer, I shouldn't have to do PD during summer. This is my break. I totally get where that comes from. But do you see how that might be setting us up for already having a bad time if we go in with that attitude. And it's the same thing we say to our students, right? We say, um, you know what, just try it. Maybe you'll like it. And the funny thing is, as teachers, we sometimes have a hard time practicing what we preach, don't we? So try to go in with an open mind. Try to go in with a positive attitude, the right mindset, and you might find that you enjoy it. PD doesn't have to suck. It can actually be kind of fun, depending on the content, who's delivering it, the organization, where it is. Um, so go in with an open mind and try to see the positives in there. Um, use it as an opportunity to connect and network. Honestly, that's what traveling teachers was originally for, so that teachers could find ways that they can travel together, right? That's kind of the, 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 the woven into everything we do. And so PDs are a great way to do that. You meet other educators, especially if you're in another country, you know they already love to travel and you get to meet locals to that area, which is just fantastic. And consider the new skills you're learning. You never know. You never know when you're going to learn something. I went to a PD about um, website building and basically web development. And a few years ago, I would have never thought I would use it. I actually just remember this. I went to like a, a program on web development, not actually for teaching job for my past one. And I was like, I'm never going to run a website. And now I'm laughing because I'm like managing seven. <laughs> so you just never know what you're going to have in the future. If you go in with an open mind, you just never know where that skill, where it's going to take you, where the journey you're going to be on. Ashley is watching. Hey, Ashley, be sure to comment, engage, drop your favorite travel emoji if you're coming in. Looks like Deanna said, I'm preparing for an FFT fellowship application for next year. So I'll definitely be using a lot of these ideas. That's great, Deanna. I'm so glad this is helpful for you. Jessica Culver said, Teacher PD has seriously been some of my favorite travel. Isn't that funny, right? You know, when we say PD, people go like, oh, you know, um, like, no, please. And um, 
And I was even like, I'm actually kind of moving towards the direction of making more of the traveling teachers trips recreational and learning more personal development, um, things like that. But professional development can be amazing if it's done right. You know, teachers, we love to learn and we love to share knowledge and help people build new skills and, you know, have memories and experiences. So we have to be willing to do that ourselves, right? And you never know when you're going to learn a new skill. This is another thing I do is I think about the student that will benefit. I actually try to even like address them in my head like, okay, Hezekiah, what skill, how, how can this benefit you? Because like, for example, for art, I don't really consider myself a great artist, but I would go to an art workshop because I know that I have like a couple of kids who really are just great artists naturally. And I want to be able to foster that or at least have something to connect with them with. So you just never know when you're going into a program, what skill you have that'll help you enrich your life personally or professionally, or what might help your student. Vanessa Holloway said, I am a national oratory fellow with Forest Theater in D.C. We travel to D.C. twice a year, except this year, obviously, right? And I always get there a day early and stay a day late to hit museums, monuments, etc. It's been an amazing opportunity. I've never even heard of that. Thank you for sharing that, Vanessa. That's awesome. So if you're into public speaking and, you know, debate, that sounds like it sounds like Vanessa would be a great person to connect with. Um, and that's amazing. Alyssa said, I love travel and professional development. So many benefits that you don't even know about yet. Absolutely. You just never know. And I think that we're moving into a really exciting time with education where teachers are going to be learning more from each other. And I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but the, you, there's so many ways to convey information. And the internet, I mean, has made that. We've, we've seen the shift in the past three months, right, of how basically the world went online. Businesses are rethinking everything. Ed tech companies are completely pivoting. We are in this amazing, crazy, revolutionary time. And we can choose to be stressed out about it, or we can choose to see it as an amazing opportunity, as what I think it is. And, um, and learn new skills, right? Like um, a lot of teachers are learning Google Classroom and other learning management systems, um, how to use technology in general, and that can be a real benefit to them, right? Absolutely, Alyssa, on board 100%. And it's okay if you don't like it, right? It's okay if you go to professional development. Of course, you want to try to, you know, go in with something you like, but it's okay if you go to something and you're like, that wasn't for me. You know, I, don't, I didn't really like that that much. Because what an amazing thing you can take back to your students. How many things do your students do that you're like, that, I mean, I can already think of it, like five kids in my head when I get to shared reading time, they're like, Ugh, you know, because it's new and it's hard and they're, they're struggling with it. They're challenged, they're learning something. And we're the same way, right? You don't grow out of that. Challenge and change is always hard. And so there might be something that you don't like because it's hard, or maybe you just don't like it as much. I probably wouldn't go to a math PD, but if I had to, if I was required to, I'd say, you know what? It's okay if I don't like it. I can still benefit from it, and someone else will benefit from me learning this. Um, oh, Gina's watching. Hey, Gina. Um, so, yeah, so it, it can still move you towards your goals. You never know. And then also another way is to make it work for your side hustle. You've heard me talk a lot about how you can travel for free and how you can get paid to travel if you either work in the travel industry or if you're a travel blogger or blogger. And so here are some different ways you can do that. You can blog or vlog about your experience. Um, you can use the scenery. This is something I love that I've seen some people who teach online do. When they travel, they'll take their laptop with them. And if you want to teach online, this is a great plus for you. Um, you. You can take your laptop with you. And as long as you make the appropriate adjustments to your schedule, you can show them. You can use that as a teachable moment in your curriculum. For me, I might go um, I might go somewhere in the reservation in the ruins, uh, maybe if I have my laptop or with my phone, and say, hey, this is Kanishba Ruins. Um, this is on the White Mountain Apache Reservation. I can give a brief history of how... Um, how reservations work if I'm teaching kids from another country who may not know um, about American reservations. So I mean, anything you have is teaching material, right? And so anything you learn can be incorporated in that as well. Ah, Judy's watching. Hey, Judy, make sure as you're coming in, say hi, drop a comment, share your favorite travel emoji. Um, for a side hustle, another way is if you go to a PD, you learn a new skill, you learn some new info, use that skill to freelance, Right. Like I, I went to a PD about um, editing and writing essays. Again, it's funny what ends up being like something you're into. Um, I used to hate writing, even as someone who worked 
excuse me, in nonprofit, having to write grants and stuff, I used to, I used to hate writing because it was just so hard. You know, I would think, how oh, can't I just tell you, you know, I prefer just to work with people face to face. And so I never thought I could convey my thoughts and ideas clearly in text. And I'm still working on that. But now I'm blogging, right? And you just never know. You just never know. So it's always going to keep that open mind. And if you don't want to freelance, this is what we're going to be talking about in a second too, you can build a course, right? You can build a resource. If you sell on Teachers Pay Teachers, you can create a Nearpod lesson. Nearpod, by the way, if you're getting into education technology, Nearpod is amazing, especially if you're doing a hybrid or distance learning setup. You can have all of the kids in the lesson at the same time, and you can advance the slides and programs for them with activities, or they can do it as a self-paced thing. I love it. Absolutely. And you're buying from other teachers or from the Nearpod team. Vanessa Holloway says, yes, love bringing my travels back into the classroom. The kids love it too. Absolutely. Especially if you're teaching in a place with a low socioeconomic area um, status where maybe the kids aren't getting out and having these same experiences that you can. So what a gift that you can bring those skills, those experiences into the classroom. Absolutely. Um, and of course, you can write a review about it. So this kind of goes with the blogging or vlogging. Um, but you can share your experience. Even if you didn't like it, you can share that with other teachers. Every experience, every lesson we have is benefiting someone else. Right? So that's something to keep in mind for your PD too. And then finally, here is the last one. We talked about how we can choose the right one, how we can write earlier or later, how we can um, use it for our side hustle, how we can... Um, Gosh, I'm already forgetting the five. But yeah, so we've already covered four. So now we're on bring it back to the class with you, right? And that's kind of perfect what Vanessa said. Because you can teach students, it's okay to not enjoy every experience. If you didn't like a professional development, or if you just have to do something you don't like, that's okay. Students should see that too, because that's real life. <laughs> Sometimes, maybe I'll get in trouble for this. Sometimes when I have to go to a certain meeting, I'm just like, ah. Kids will say something like, oh, oh, we're not having you today. We're an ancillary rotation all day. And I was like, yeah, unfortunately, I have to go to a meeting. And they'll be like, oh, do you not like meetings? That sounds boring. And I'm like, you know what? Sometimes it is boring. And I just tell them straight up, yeah, sometimes it is boring. And they're like, well, why do you do it if it's boring? Because kids are learning that sometimes we have to do things that we maybe don't like to do now because they pay off later right? or because we are required to do them. Um, working out, for example, is not something I think is super enjoyable. But, you know, I exercise because I know that I want to be healthy and I'm thinking about that end result, right? So that's something good for the kids to learn. They may not have someone showing them that. Um, show them you're a lifelong learner. Show them that you're open to learning new things, you know, when you're going to PD or for anything. And what's really cool, and I think Vanessa touched on this, and Alyssa has definitely has, you can give them a tour of where you went. So you can show them on Google Earth, Google Maps. You can make a near podcast and have the students actually walk through those sites with you, which I think is great. Um, and, you know, like I said, anytime you're doing a program, you can just think about that student who's going to benefit. Even if they wouldn't be directly interested in the information, who is going to benefit from you learning about it? Or you can just make it into a lesson or enrichment sequence. Maybe even if it's not like core content that you teach, maybe it's some kind of enrichment that you could do or for an after school program. Okay. So all of that in mind, we have some trips coming up for traveling teachers. Some of them include professional development. Some of them don't. Um, the Explore, Learn in Finland one, you're going to have those three and a half days of learning from other educators, from Finnish educators, watching them in the classroom, which I think is just magic. Um, if you just want to do the school visits, it is more affordable, but nothing else is included. So you'd have to pay for your own accommodations, but that option Oh, Jessica says, yes, the students love when we learn about a place and show them photos of me there. Makes it more real to them. Absolutely. Teachable moments. Everything is a teachable moment. Um, St. Patrick's Week in Ireland. I am so excited for that one. And as soon as I have the information, I'll send it to you. We're working with like three different parties. So it takes a while to get back. And obviously, like, half the staff is reduced right now. But I'm excited for that because we'll be in Ireland on the week of St. Patrick's Day. So just the history. I am super excited about that. I'm actually learning the Irish language and the person who's guiding the tour um, is at least not guiding, excuse me, but like co-leading it is uh, my Irish language teacher. And then the person that is leading us lives in Ireland. She's local there. So I'm super excited about that. And then of course, 
island hopping on a yacht. Super excited about that. And while it's not professional development, anyone who comes on the trip will be able to learn to sail. So if that's something you've ever wanted to do recreationally, you'll be able to do that. Okay, so we're wrapping up toward the end. So if you're new to Travel Hackers Academy, every single week, what I do is I go through the Facebook group and I look and see who has been the most engaged member this week. That means that person is commenting on things, they're sharing valuable information or trips or just opportunities with other traveling teachers, they're commenting, they're attending the lives, they're, you know, they're, they're being engaged, okay? So I looked through it for this week and we're gonna get a little drum roll. You don't have to do this if you don't want to get your home. And the most engaged member of this week was Jessica Mackiewicz. Yay, or Mackiewicz. Let me know how to pronounce your name. Um, so go ahead and send me a message. I'll be sure to tag you in the comments below in case you couldn't watch this live. Just make sure you message me and I will be sure to email you a $10 Amazon gift card. Okay, so looks like we had some people drop off, but that's okay. If you are watching right now or if you're new, the next part is we go through and we pick someone randomly. And that random person gets some kind of travel goodie bag delivered to them, um, actually snail mail to them. So if you're still watching, just go ahead and type me because I can actually see your names on my phone. So I'll give you a second because I know there's a slight delay. So go ahead and just say me and I will look at the comments and then I will pick one of those people who said me to be able to get their travel goodie bag. They're going to pick them. I'm going to random name picker, the same one I use every week. And then that person will message me their mailing address and I will make sure that's sent out to them. So I'm going to give you a second. Go ahead and type me if you are still watching and listening. Jessica Culver is still watching and listening. Awesome. Who else is on right now? Make sure that you comment you or otherwise it's going to be Jessica Culver by default, which is fine. She'd probably be excited about that. Oh, Vanessa is watching and listening. Awesome. Who else? Who else? Who else is watching and listening? I'm going to give it about 30 more seconds, just like we do as teachers, even though it's, it kills me because I'm just like, oh, the time. So let's go ahead. I'm going to set a 30-second timer. And while that timer is going off, um, I also want to tell you guys about something super exciting to me. I know a lot of people in this group have expressed interest in teaching online. And I know that a lot of us have taught online through our school districts just because of being required to with the COVID-19 pandemic and how that's affected school and instruction delivery. But I know there are a lot of people in this group who are interested in teaching online full-time or part-time to supplement their income. So I'm actually developing a program that's going to allow um, that's going to allow teachers to be able to connect other teachers who currently work online um, and learn from them. And so the whole idea is to teach online in 30 days. So if you're interested in that and you'll have 30 days, like the, the goal is to get you from interested to secured position or contract in 30 days. So I know it's a big promise, but if that's something you're interested in, be sure to um, just say, I'm interested in teaching online. And if you are already teaching online, but you're interested in coming on as a guest teacher for that program, say, I already teach online and I would love to be a part. And then I'll be sure to reach out to you. Okay, so it went just over 30 seconds. All right, so let's go back to that screen and see who else commented. Looks like we have Jessica, Vanessa, Alyssa. Alyssa said, I'm also measuring radish radicals. Radish radicals, what? Measuring radish radicals. I don't know if that was a typo or what. what is that? Radish radicals. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and switch over to this tab here and go to my name picker. I have to use it on, I have like a million Google accounts, so I have to use it on the Google account that I'm signed into. Okay, so let's type these names in. We have Alyssa, we have Jessica, we have Vanessa, lots of, oh, the root, okay, cool, cool. Obviously, I've, I'm obviously ignorant to what you're talking about, girl. Okay, um, yeah, and so those are the only people I had comments. So we have a pretty good chance of you winning. Alyssa, Jessica, or Vanessa, I'm going to go ahead and pick a random winner. If you know of a website or app that is a little more exciting, I would love to have that. Oh, just in the middle of doing a toxicology science experiment. Of course you are, Alyssa. I love that you do that on your own for fun. And it looks like our winner is Vanessa. Yay! So go ahead and tell Vanessa congratulations. Vanessa, go ahead and message me your address, and I'll be sure that you get that travel goodie bag sent to you. And if you have not 
excuse me, if you have not received yours yet, go ahead and message me and I'll make sure that I send something out to you. So thank you all for joining me today. Um, if this is your first one, or even if it's not your first one, right? If you're just like new to everything that's going on, we do this every Thursday at 7 p.m. Arizona time. And then the following Thursday at 6 p.m. Arizona time, we do a watch party for the previous week. So be sure to tune in. If you're tuning in live, that's when you'll have the opportunity to win things, to engage, to learn, and to hear about all the new stuff that's going on, okay? So be sure to tune in. And um, as always, if you're interested in this stuff, if you're interested in the course we're teaching online, like you want to teach online in 30 days, you want to get started with that, let's make it happen, um, reach out to me. If you're interested in working in the travel industry, reach out to me, okay? Um, I don't want to be messaging all of you at that, but if that's something that you're genuinely interested in, then you know I want to help. So just let me know. And um, that's pretty much all I have for today. Thank you so much for being a part of the Traveling Teachers community. And thank you so much for tuning in. Bye, guys.